And I want to thank the provost's office for giving out these awards, um, as well as the IV team for all their help and the Gibbs grant people. This has really been, this work is all part of um, work that I did for the Gibbs grant two years ago, and then assessed it. What do I do here? Is this allow? <laughs> Server doesn't like the connection. So I'm going to talk about a project that I did for the Davis Grant, and it was all about teaching students um, the team project and collaborative writing. Part of the Davis Grant was that we had to do two things. The purpose was to integrate online technologies into the classroom. And the second one was to assess how those online technologies helped us with student learning and um, student learning outcomes. So we had to pick a student learning outcome and then um, implement it with online tools and face-to-face -face classroom and um, then study it. So so the, um, the learning outcome that I chose, I really wanted to find out about the team project. I think that students come to the classroom with a lot of experience having done team projects, <coughs> but I don't think that they do them very well um, in the implementation. And one of the learning outcomes for a series of courses that we teach in writing such as um, our tech comm course for engineers, our biz comm course for business communication students, is to learn effective, um, to effectively manage collaborative writing projects. So, and collaboration is all about writing, so we really um, work to teach collaborative writing in those classes. Um, but they seem to me these team projects tend to have a lot of problems, so I want to I'm assuming since some of you, since you are here, that you do team projects. Team projects, yes. Some. Most definitely. And why do you, I mean, my first question was when, when I started this, well, why do we do these anyway? Why do we do the team project? Well, I'm, I'm doing it in project management, and so I'm trying to create a diversified team create a, a realistic experience of the difficulty of talking across silos. Yeah, talk, communicating across different groups of people. Yeah. Yeah. And do they do it well? What are some of the problems with team projects? Well, one of them is the allocation of credit and responsibility to assigned roles. And in order to deal with that, I've included a peer review as part of the grading system, where they each have a certain number of votes that they can distribute amongst the team yeah. based upon who is on the team. Yeah, I think that this idea, the uh, students, when they do these team projects, they have tend to take the divide and conquer approach. You take section A and you're going to take section B and Tracy and you got section C. Everybody goes their way and then in the end 
there tends not to be attention to the entire document as a whole. There's other strategies, however, that, that we can encourage. One is face-to-face, -face, having them sit together with the document to really um, look at it together. Um, another strategy is a more layered approach where team members are assigned specific roles, and each person works on the document in terms, layering in new expertise. And this is what I think you're talking about as well, Thomas, in terms of that idea of expertise. And one of the things I wanted to do was see that students were using a variety of these approaches, not just if you line heavily on one. And one of the things I want to teach in class. The second expectation was that teams would manage their productivity by using online learning tools uh, to manage the documents, to discuss their ideas, their expectations, and their timelines. You know, we've got all these online tools that are at their disposal, and we can we can teach them how to use them to manage um, um, team projects. Then the third expectation that I have in terms of writing was that part of this divide and conquer approach when everybody has their section is not much attention to the document as a whole. And as part of the writing process, I want them to go back and revise and to look at each other's sections, but not just for proofreading, not just for copy editing. How do I get it back? Um, it's because it shuts off the but you really look at it from a global level, where I would say, did we, did we make the mark? Are we meeting our audience needs? Are we, is everything there um, from a, did we, did we do what we had to do? From a substantive level, are we adding support where we needed to? Or is it organized well? Um, are we making strong claims throughout? Do those claims make sense as a whole? So there's all of these things that happen in terms of revising. It's really hard if Tracy's got her section on her computer and Ed's got his section and they never really come together. Um, so I really want them to work together to think on that global and substantive level as well. <coughs> so when I just redesigned the course, when I was integrating the online tools, I thought, well, how can I um, really um, take this, take my expectations, what can I do in the online space versus what can I do in the face-to-face -face space. And this is the biggest thing that I took away from this Vivis class is thinking about what works well, what is your outcome, what do you want to do, what can you do well in class, and what works well in that online space so that you can integrate them together as a whole to accomplish your outcomes. And one of the things that I did that was really kind of dramatic for me project was that I decided that given the problems the students have, that I would give over the class period, give over me standing up here talking about concepts to students, I would give it over to the club, to the team meetings. And so the class period during team projects became a team meeting. I would set out agendas, I would have students students generate agenda items, they had to leave with action items for the team to hold each other accountable. Um, they would give short team presentations to the class on their progress and what they were doing. They would interact with other teams. We would have Q&A sessions. But it really became a problem solving session in terms of their team project, um, which it was really an enjoyable thing. And then in the online space, it was preparing them to then go off and write separately in ways that, that they had a sense of, okay, here's what we have to do at the, at the global substantive, substantive level. Um, we did, they wrote sections as teams, we did peer review, as you say, peer review is very helpful, both formal and informal. Um, I would respond in the online space, they would discuss their projects, um, and I chose to use Google Drive because it really helped the students with document management. And um, so I would, in my drive, I set up a folder for the class. And it's hard to see on this picture that this orange space over here represents the class folder. And then I had each team create their own team folder within the class folder. Um, so in the next slide, we can see 
this team here, then they manage their own documents. They created and manage their own documents within their team's folder. So they had access to all their documents for the team all the time, uh, which was really, I think, beneficial for them. And they could see what each other was doing, not only within the team, but on other teams. Oh, how did you handle that? How did you handle that problem within this specific document? So this idea of formative assessment was, was kind of built into the design of the, of the course. Um, so it really helped with this idea of document management and having access at all times. My other hope, too, is that it has tools on Google Drive for this virtual team meeting. Um, you can see in the upper right-hand corner, or to view some below, you can add comments um, where they can discuss what they've been doing with the document. Um, it also has synchronous writing where you can be and you can be um, over in your office at Foster, and I can be in my office in Lawrence, and we can write at the same time on the same document, which students just find so cool. They're like, wow, that's awesome. Or they can be at two computers next to one another, typing and working on the same document at the same time and see each other's work unfold. And they just think that's so awesome, yeah. How does that work out with a given paragraph if you're working on the same paragraph? Um, I wish we could try it, but yep. you would be typing, and I would see I would see you in say green typing out the letters, and then I could be just ahead of you. But you see on the screen what the other person is typing. Wow. Yeah, very powerful, very very cool. Um, so it allows for this virtual teaming in ways that if your documents are siloed and on other people's computers. And then with this commenting feature, what I really liked was that I was able to go in as well, and I could do this before class to see where did things stand, and I could add comments. Um, and it was really nice to create a conversation between the students and me um, in terms of the document and what they were doing. I could also walk into the classroom and know the status of their projects in a way that I can't if they've got these on their hard drives somewhere else. The other thing that we all really liked was that you can make these comments and then people can respond to those comments or they can hit resolved. So that check mark means resolved and you can reopen it. And as engineers, we love that. It's like the check off, right? Okay, you know, the teacher said blah, 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 and then, and then they could check, check, we did it, right? We, we resolved that. So this was a real plus for us in terms of that virtual teaming. And then um, finally, it I think really facilitated this whole document approach where they could see the documents um, as a whole and what each other are working on, <coughs> and hold each other accountable in ways that I think are more productive than if they're sent off to work on their sections on their own. Um, and the other thing about accountability that I really like about Google Drive is it has this revision history. And what you're looking at on the screen is a screenshot of you can go in and you can see um, who made what changes. And so what we're looking at here is this student on December 6th made this change. And I could click on this and I could see the changes that he made. Um, this student was in also on December 6th and made some changes, um, you know, and so you can see who contributed. And I like that because I know if people are falling behind or away from the team project, and the students also can have that accountability with each other, which is really nice. Um, so that's very helpful. Um, then what I did is I had to, I went back and what I wanted to know about this was my research question wasn't so much, is this tool better than a face-to-face -face model? My research question was I really wanted to know what are students actually doing when they collaborate, either with these tools or um, 
you know, outside of class, I wanted to know what are their behaviors in terms of this collaboration. So what I did with IRB approval, I looked at all their documents, which included team contracts, all of these documents with their revision histories. Um, I looked at their reports where I asked them to talk about their teams and their team aid. Um, I did midterm evaluations, end-term evaluations, knowledge surveys, to really find out what are they doing when they're collaborating um, under the hood. And I, I took that rubric, my expectations for what is it that they're doing, and examined those documents to see how they did. And one of the things that I found was that most teams still heavily relied on the divided approach to account for individual work. Um, that even though we were teaching these other ways and that they have these tools in front of them, that they were still, that is, that is still the tried, true method. Um, and that's okay. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. They also tended to use Google Drive in limited ways. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And they um, used the tools, few teams used the tools to get, to revise at the global and substantive levels. And so, Ed, I got my rubrics, which you'll like. Here are my results. Where did it go? Oh, this is where I want to go off screen. This one, right? Let's see, I'll just do it the old fashioned way. Drag it. <laughs> and then I want to. So for each objective, and I can show you the rubric, I went through um, results of document analysis by learning objective. The first one that they used a variety of collaboration um, strategies, and I found that some, they're, they're right down the middle. Um, emerging, half the teams are emerging, half the teams are above, which I guess that's a pretty good result. But I don't know, I and mean, Ed, you can help me with that, and I can and I can show you how I judge those as well. Then the second objective was that they use manage their productivity by using the writing tools, and again, it was it was pretty half and half split. Four teams were proficient and above, four teams lower, and then here's the how they gave substantive feedback. And again, you know, perfect bell right in the middle. Um, what this means, and I can show you more how I sort of analyze that, and is, oh, this doesn't have that. Um, can you see that more? You want me to bump it more? So in the proficient, in terms of what strategies are they using, they use different strategies in the proficient area. Each, each team member contributes at all stages of the writing process, which is really important. Um, but it may be, uh, and they are using layering strategies, but it may be inconsistent or um, limited in scope. So we're starting to see, you know, I was teaching these strategies all along in the class, writing agenda we're starting to see it, um, this is what you can say. And emerging, and then half of them were in that emerging area, they tended to rely on one strategy during the writing process. Each team member is contributing, uh, but it still is limited to their, maybe limited to their own section. Um, their, the role of team members are ambiguous, and we talk a lot about the role of their team member roles. Um, the text may read, still read as individual pieces, with little attention to the whole, um, right? So the idea is to get everybody from that emerging um, In terms of the tools and the features, um, proficient would be that they're using Google Drive to manage their documents and to work virtually. They use features to interact, but its, but it's um, use is limited in scope and participation. Um, then on the emerging, they used the features to compose and manage, but they weren't using the other tools to, to team virtually. And then with the feedback, one of the things that we're really working on is to move them from here, which is where they're just 
working with each other at the proofreading copy editing stage to really be asking each other questions at that more formal and substantive level. So <coughs> So, um, those are the formal results, and I'll just conclude this by saying I also polled students to say, what did you think of this project? I got a lot of feedback. They like Google Drive. They like the integration of online tools. It took the stress off that kept coming up. Whatever that means, it took the stress off. Um, but And they also really liked that it added that idea of accountability, that accountability and fairness to other that kept coming up over and over again. So with that, I would like to, you know, open up to your ideas, comments, things that you're thinking about in terms of leverage uh, team projects, online This is so impressive. You're carefully thought out, you, you're being clear with people what you want them to do. It was an empirical study, so you're looking at things. Great. No, it is, the in this project was just fantastic. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it was really a great way to walk us through taking the learning outcome and figuring out how it's operating in the classroom. So any other any any um, ways that you're using? I want to hear more from you guys as well in terms of what you're doing that works in terms of leverage, things that work in terms of the online space, things that you want to try. Yeah, I'm sorry I came in late, so I'm not sure what you even teach. What class is this for? This was for a writing class called Technical Communication. And we teach, uh, this is primarily for engineers, and their job is to walk them through writing processes to really think about writing as a process and to think about you know audience specific audience strategies, text analysis, how you can convey things out of text, how you present ideas. Sophomores or juniors or sophomores, yeah, I'm saying come on up. Yeah. Yeah. Well I I'm teaching as uh, Tracy knows, I'm teaching a uh, a large class in sociology, introduction to sociology. And um, I'm using, I, this semester I just started trying blogs uh, so that each, uh, the class is divided up, uh, 90 students into 18 blogging groups. And each group is given an assignment every week, a reading assignment for the class. Yeah. And I, I asked them to collaborate on reading the text and then writing a brief report on it. And I experienced much of the same that you uh, mentioned um, with the emerging group. I think my whole class is still pretty much emerging. There are one or two students who um, probably do most of the work on, in the groups, but they, they do, um, they, they correct each other's spelling and grammar, but they don't do this global substantive kind of thinking, yeah. which is really what I want them to do. I want them. I'll overlook the, gra the grammar if they would identify the theme and then develop the theme and explain it to the rest of the class. Their job is to teach it to the rest of the class. And uh, yeah, I mean, exactly. This is what one of the things why this project came about for me, right? I think students on a knowledge survey they said, "Yeah, we know all about collaboration and teams." But then when it came down to when I did a knowledge survey, do you know, you know all these items that go with it, they didn't have experience, they don't, I think they don't know how to do the collab. Mm -hmm. It's also challenging, like if, um, I, if I'm in a classroom with peers and I'm not gonna assert ideas, like I'm, I'm, it's a natural place for me to be just kind of gentle with all of you. And that's the place where they're at too. Right, right, right. right. And they, so they, they don't want to uh, act like they know more than the other person. Than the peers. Than the group. So how, our question is how to scaffold the getting to that place where they yeah. can give real feedback to each other. What you said you were doing things in the classroom to coach them and, and encourage them. Can 
contribution. Yeah. Did they share? So, so I think the big thing for me was that I had, I felt I did have to coach them and scaffold that idea of okay, here's here's how you can work together. And in the tech comp class, because it's so profession and communicator oriented, we do teach the agendas. And I found I had to really bear the agenda to get at, as you say, yeah. the action, the item on the agenda that would ask them to do that role of what they can do together. And so I might have that be the first item agenda, you know, to, to say, okay, what in, in the blogging situation to have them just say, okay, come up, what are the major and have them discuss it mm -hmm. in class as a team and then come come out of that. So we would come in and out of the teams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we've got to work through that idea. Yeah, that sounds I, I understand. Yeah, so then in, so then they would discuss it in their teams and then I might have them discuss it with another team and we might discuss all of their ideas in their class to bring it back. Is each team working on the same thing or are they working on different? They're all working on the same project, but they may have, so they're all doing the same kind of project, but they may have a different text or a different problem they're solving. Are they reading text first and coming up with their own proposal as a consequence? Yes, but the texts that they're reading are probably a little bit different. So they're doing research, they're having to come back with research to say, okay, this is what our audience needs in this situation, right? We have to come up with this piece of writing, this is what we're proposing. In terms of audience needs. Um, so it's like a jigsaw, but take their share of it, just old techniques that you, you have students. Yeah. That's great collaborative work. What is the jigsaw? I don't know the jigsaw. I know the thing pair share and I rely on it every single day. Yeah. What's the jigsaw? I use the jigsaw and it failed. Uh, that's a good thing to share. This was with first year students and that's my <coughs> focus on teaching up to now. And um, I wanted them to just study race because that's ethnicity is something that we have to have all students figure out. American Anthropological Association has these five groups as biological and social and all, all these different perspectives on it. So, I went A, B, C, D, E around the room. All the A's studied biological, all the B's studied another piece, right? So they had to go home and read it and study it and understand it and come back and meet with the A's and then they would talk about it so they all get it, so right? So teaching their... Each other's. Yes. Yeah, the A's are doing it. And then the jigsaw comes together. The A's, the B's, C's, and D's all come together and they have to teach each other. But I had to, their first year student, and I had to put more in it so they not only they would do that, and then one of them had to present to the whole class, this is the core idea of our thing, right? And then after that, they all would get together. And it failed because I, I failed to inoculate them ahead of time. I didn't say, and I mentioned this, <laughs> I didn't say, look, this is how learning takes place. There's five opportunities for you to learn this and you're going to need all five of them because my test is going to be really rigorous at the end. You're going to read it, you're going to talk with your peers, think about this, your mind is working over it all these five times. That's the jigsaw. You, you have students study something then come together in a group and then they break apart and come together with other different people and teach each other. Right. So they're using different learning, they're trying to integrate different learning styles because maybe some people are better at certain ways of thinking and learning, yeah. so that by using a number of them, you sort of try to get everybody. Everybody might, so the neat thing is sometimes I talk at this level, because I'm 40 and they're, you know, 18. So, but when they're talking in peers, they're talking at a level they can get it. So more of the, I find in the jigsaw, more of that group got it, at least A, and then the B, A, B, a bunch of groups. It's not as good as the other group. know about um I thought maybe it means the role signal change like they it's hard to when I'm in a group I don't want to be I'm a, I'm a man and I'm a conscious of that so when I'm in a group of women I shut my mouth because often men open their mouth 
And that's the only way to do it. I gotta just shut up and not speak because I'm gonna end up talking more than everybody and then actually I don't think I'm speaking out loud. Um, that's, I, that's a strategy I use, but I don't know if the UFOs got that. So they need a strategy, a signal. Okay, you all have to change roles and you're now doing that role and you're doing that role and you're doing that role. We have to tell them, here's the roles, everybody's gonna do all of them, do it. And you're gonna suck at some of them, but it's your beginning and that's okay. And one of the things we do in this class with the team practices, we talk about very explicitly about the roles that, so you have a team leader, what does that mean? And there's this great um, self injury one of these like Myers Briggs tests for the role that you play on teams, for instance, and all that. And it comes out that, oh, you're the implementer, and you're the, so it, it has this series of roles that different people play on teams, and, and so one of the first team meets is to talk about your results and what role you play, and then to keep touching back on that in terms of how people are contributing to that role. Because I think the thing is, is they don't know how to divide up projects equitably, because equity is a huge thing yeah. for them, when without, okay, here we divide it up, but how do you value, how do you quantify some of these other expertises that people bring in that are also really valuable? So did you specifically do team building? I guess you didn't in your organization. No. Did you specifically do team building in your class? We did wrote a team contract. We did the, um, we did the, um, you know, that Myers-Briggs thing. We talk a lot about their team roles. Talk a lot about communication. Did they um, assign themselves to balance the team roles? Did they go that far? Rather than performing and just doing the, the tasks, were they functioning as a team? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I think, I think by doing this, you do get higher functioning teams. And I can go around and it gives me a language to talk to teams right. that might be Laundering, and it gives me language to say, okay, who's your team leader? Who's emerging? And when I I've started doing this, I I have them do the team inventory, and then they apply for a team, saying they write me a cover letter and a resume, saying here's the team experience I bring, here's the team role I play, so that I can mix them up in that way, yeah. uh, so that I do get a team leader that's an implementer. Plan with it to see how that would work. And, and do do team members keep the same role throughout the semester? Sometimes it changes. So, uh, sometimes it becomes very clear that Brendan is the team leader, and they love that and they appreciate that. In other cases, some people have them switch roles. Um, kind of try that to see how that works. That's what I've been doing with the moms. I ask them to rotate because we break up the writing assignment into five separate pieces and I don't want one person to constantly write the introduction, which is the tougher bit, right? And and so I want them to rotate the role. But I don't know if that's the right thing to do. It's just to, to make, it, make it equitable, yeah. to make it seem more fair, but maybe it's not the right thing to do. I don't know. I'm curious about what, what type of team Yeah, what do you do about teams? team building? You well, we, we, of course, talked about the dorming and storming of teams, and we talked about that. We allow the teams to emerge. Now, there are people who emerge because they're facilitators, and there are people who emerge because they're autocratic. Yeah. And different teams develop very different team cultures that are really effective teams. So, so you know, you, that was part of the learning experience, because beyond the substance of what we were generating, to which I was not going to grade strongly on, the importance was not the issue. The issue was a reflection of the process of generating so they had to keep journals. But to keep journals, they had to be reflective. And that produced a whole other dimension of challenge of them. Because they were used to reflecting on content, but not on reflecting on process. So there was a, there was a new dimension of challenge. And for me, the real problem was my own time management. And I'm kind of interested in your experience with time management and what it means as well. Well, just let me just say, too, I, I think that your idea that they reflect on it is something that I did as well. They had a final report with this, and I agree with you wholeheartedly that in some ways I said, this final report, once you reflect on your team process, and what you did is more 
important that the product itself, because it because it is. How did you how did you do this as a team? What did you do? And so I, I agree with you. That's a yeah. really important piece. Um, and in terms of time management, you mean you're doing a lot of asynchronous and synchronous checking in with your students. Yeah. You have a part time lecturer. Right. I don't even have office hours. Right. So for me, when I'm working in this asynchronous mode, I've done it in some of the information flows I'm using the wiki. Um, it really helps me to have automated summaries of who's doing how much and really try to get feedback because tracking it down with a class of 30 or 50 becomes very problematic right. in a hurry. I mean, I, I certainly don't police these areas. And I, I think that when you, in terms of time management, Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong, but they add a lot of upfront time to find it. You have to think about before you go in. And so the, the time management becomes on the front end versus then, then you can let them run. Right. And when I'm going in to, um, before class, I might glance through the documents just as a check in to say, all right, where do they stand? And so I think it, I think that that is enormously helpful because it it increases the value of our time in class. Our time remains very um, you know focused on what they've done rather than congested. So and then this level of looking at their documents, I don't I don't do that normally. This was very time. Has become a routine going forward. Yes. Does the learning curve make you less eager to do that? Or? Yeah, I mean, and it's still there's still things like I still you know try to think about how can I make the team project or the team meetings um, you know more beneficial, like just really um, developing these things. But but it's a nice structure. For me, you get them in their teens and they have their manager in the classroom and keep coming in and out. I still teach them stuff. How large are your teens? The teens tend to be between three and four. Okay. I push my set specifically to create the pressure of they wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. That's a big team. Yeah, it is. But this is, I mean, project management is something that that yeah. applies to. See more of the other slides from the, the data piece? Which piece? No, I, these are the PDF side. I was interested in this slide from the middle one that you were showing me. Oh, uh, please. Only because it's just up. That's the timer. Oh. Yeah, that's right. It's online. Sorry. <laughs> Which ones? Are you, were you thinking of one in particular? No, no, all those right there were great because I like, you have so much information of that called formative assessment. You were able to see what they're doing. So you have a sense when you're in class, it's no more blind. You have a sense who's been working and who hasn't and how much they accomplished and wow. Yeah, and, and the formative assessment is the students can see each other's data. Which, as well, you know, we can say, look, look at this. You know, I can pull these up too in class. So a question might come up about something, and I could say, well, let's look at how team eight handled this, because I know before and team eight did a really good job, or there's something about teammates that I want to show because I've been sort of tracking team eight. Um, so, so that's I think really powerful. My blogging groups, they have privacy for a week while they pull together their interpretation of a text before they publish it to a different site where their class sees it. And 
And the reason I did that was because some students, I was afraid, would go into other people's blocks because there has to be more than one team working on the same reading. Because, you know, it's 90 students, 18 groups, which may, and we don't have that many readings yeah. per week, right? So, um, and, and I don't know if you, if you encountered this, but when students know that group is really good, why don't we just copy what they have? Um, that could be a problem. So I don't know if you have that encounter. I mean, it is. It's something for me to say, too. I'm going to open everything up to all of you. You can see they all. But this is open, isn't it? All it's teams all can go into any group. Open. And I think about, in response to that question, because I had that, too, I think about my own behavior when I'm collaborating. Or even when I was a student in Ibis, um, and we had to, to do a posting or something, or I can't remember what we had to do, but I looked at each other's friends. I wanted to see what other people were doing. It seemed so helpful to me. Like, yeah, it's oh, I could do something like that too. Like that's that's a great idea, only I want to do it this way. And I always thought that when we did that wiki work, I just thought that was great that I could see what other people were doing and Helpful. As um, long as you apply your own spin to something someone else teaches you. Yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, some of my students aren't spinning, they're just Copying. stealing. Right. Yeah. So, my answer for that, if I don't interject here, um, if you want to measure their learning sometime right after that, because what, what, what you all want is for them to work over in their mind and think through it and, and learn something from it. And your point is that these students who are copying, they're not learning. They're just reading and copying. So if you take a, an assessment after that, of will somehow measure. Oh, I do. It will become very evident. Oh, I do, I do, I do. And they know, and they know. Okay. But, you know, they still get credit for that thing that they did. Right? Uh, so even if they uh, stole uh, it. No, the work you're doing is the learning stuff. And I don't give you credit for doing the work. You must perform on this thing Well, here. in order for them to do the work and to get them to do the work, I do. Okay, some points. Yeah, maybe. Hey, I know we're wrestling over how many points is the work <coughs> and how many points is the learning. The right. Well, yeah, the exams count for a lot more than these little exercises. Yeah. But okay. for for whatever reason, people don't yeah, do that. Much. They get they get all, all obsessed about yeah. five points yeah, here yeah, and they yeah. blow out fifty over there. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know that's <laughs> some logical. Right. I wonder if Ed's point about what might help you is about jigsawing in his case, where he's, Sherry Evans from the English department does a good thing. There are some things with discussions with texts, so everybody's reading the same text and discussing the same text publicly. But what she does I, um, is this student, like, okay, you're going to concentrate on this quote or this claim from this text. Group B, you're going to concentrate on this claim. You, know, you could jigsaw the same article through those teams, right. and then they could see what each other's doing and learn from that jigsawing yeah. in a really cool way. Right. Uh, I'm gonna have to learn this song. I've never and then come back. At I've it. never read about it or studied it, but I I've written it down so that I can study what that method is. Well, if you Google it, it's I'll, I'll find it. Well, I send you oh, that would be great. I appreciate that. Uh, that that's powerful. Think about the. For, for my activity, it was they have so many opportunities to work over in their mind. So they have to read it first, so she has to have them read it. And then he has to focus in on this, and she studies that. But they're listening to each other, presenting things, and so there's, I feel like when learning comes, that they're more time over their mind more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even though these tools are really cool, I found that students have never used Google Drive or Notion. Okay. I was actually going to ask if you've noticed any change from year to year uh, as far as the number of students who I use it shocked. up their own board versus yeah. being forced to use it. Because I've used it myself since I was, well, I was only recently a student like two years ago. Um, and I've used it since 2008. That's great. I mean, in the classroom, we did Google Drive last fall, and I think I had 
just a few students out of 25 who had used it. And then we also did, we had him do Prezi's, and he was like, he's never done Prezi. And he was like, the, so even though we tend to think of this generation as being really adaptive tools, I think we have to also teach them how to interact with those tools. As well Instagram. As, <laughs> yeah, but they're not going to solve the problem of teaming. They're not going to solve the international problems. We still have to be, we still have to structure that experience and make it add to the, enhance the learning in really interesting ways. But we still have to manage, manage the experience. Is it possible, do you think, a good job to make those groups password protected just temporarily and then they can be opened up at a certain point when everyone else can go visit and see? So that at least everyone has to go up to a certain point in their own work before they get to go all across over, just yeah. just to get them started on their own, taking ownership of something. I've never um, done that because we talk a lot about writing and team projects is collaborative and it's a process. And so for them to be able to see how everybody is handling the process from start to finish, I find to be extremely beneficial. My, pro my goal is a little different, which is to um, encourage students to read texts that are difficult and learn that they can collaboratively manage uh, That's a, what a they're doing text. as well. Yep. And then come up with yes. an interpretation. Same goal. Same goal. Yep. Okay. Uh, but, I wouldn't, but I don't shut it down. Yeah. What do you mean by shutting it down? I wouldn't keep it private because I think that that thinking process of how students are reading difficult texts and, and interpreting that and managing that process from start to finish is really beneficial to the ultimate I would open it up after everything got started. <coughs> I wouldn't leave it closed. But in a class of 90, there's probably at least 30 who aren't going to do their own work. And that's a lot. Are you the right person to talk to about I, this? Yeah. Okay, right. I'll, I'll come in and tell them. But I need to do some homework first. I, I want to read it. Is this something you what, what work of the right books that you're trying to work? Well, I mean, you yeah. have a link. I mean, you can certainly use my courses, but I mean, Google Drive is obviously a lot harder. My course is sweet, but that's not to say you couldn't have some sort of link or something that groups can set up. Yeah, there's actually some integration with Google Docs now so that things posted in Google Docs can be linked directly to uh, my courses. So this feels to me like I would a week because we've done documents and, and we can see all that kind of yeah. yeah, but uh, Google does it it works a little better in terms of that collaborative as you're saying there's a there's a live piece that can happen there a little better. Um, there's a there's a better I think of that coming together than does in the written. Right. Um, the written's are great too, but it I you know it's funny because when you got when people come in and ask us questions about which is better, the wiki, how about Google, how about this, and you know, I, to be honest, I think Google's a lot easier to use. Um, so really, it really, you know, it really is just a good choice. Yeah. Um, we always try and encourage, I mean, we don't think my course is going to be all end all, I want you to know that, <laughs> but students do go there, right, and centralize, and what we have found is that if you can keep them in there and the tools are there, they're more apt to use them. So that's the only thing that I'd say. I mean, it's Google's great. It's just, you know, if you want to think about it as we do, right, before we dive into it, if that's what you want to do, there's no reason why you couldn't direct them. Your project's going to be this and look, it's going to happen over on Google Drive. What's the learning curve getting a student's top on? So, yeah. Well, it, it, so my wife is in a course, and she did, her professor has um, has him have to create an anonymous Google account so that he's never influenced by their identity and giving them grades. Wow. He's brilliant. It's really interesting. And my wife was a bit stressed about that because I'm a techie guy in my family, and I do all that stuff. And she had to go and get herself a, a Google account, and I had to coach her a little bit, but. 
um, it isn't that much. I agree, even though my wife was feeling stressed about that. I wanted to say, I heard of this kind of like a think pair share. This group, only it's group wise, think pair share. For a little while, pair you share, all, what is pair share? Okay, all, in class, I think pair share is you and I. I think first about the question that Karen has present Karen has presented to me, okay. and um, then you doing the thinking at the same time, right? So we're all thinking, and then we pair and we share, and then it could be another share share. So you could think pair share share, and then the two of us go and meet with the two of you. But you're you're losing me. With multiple <laughs> But you're doing a think group think. You guys work out your stuff, and then pair and share. Theoretically, I, I, I like the idea of everybody, because that's the way I work. I, I go out and find stuff, and I copy everybody's stuff, and I learn from it, and then I create my own. So your point is that I'm an adult learner, and I know how to do that well, and let it work. Yeah. Well, I, I'm learning this from this experience, and the students um, get upset about the fact that well, that other group copied our part of the stuff, right? And they posted after us, you could see that, and they just waited for us to do it. And so the whole equity thing comes up when the rivalries start to emerge within this, and this is a very large classroom, but I don't feel like I really have that much control. I don't get to walk through a classroom, look at these groups as they're working, because these are 90 students, and it's in one of those big lecture halls where the seating is all bolted to the so it's not the same I wonder comfortable like, does Sherry relationship. Have that, or how she, because when this idea of looking at the same text, you can create different, different groups look at different pieces of it so that they can't really, right. it minimizes the temptation to copy it. And so you build into the assignment itself things that, so that they can't do that, right? So that's part of the, trick of online is that there is this group, you're opening things up, you have to, the back end, the front end, or whichever end it is, you have to sort of, you know, create that experience for them. I always think of plagiarism that you have to minimize the opportunity for that. Well, what I'm right. trying to do, do if, we're reading a whole, if we're reading a whole book, I do try to do that by giving each group different chapters, but there's still not going to be 18 chapters. So there's going to always be some groups doing the same thing as some other groups because these classes are just enormous. And next year they're gonna be 120 instead of 90. And so I really do have to find ways that, you know. Just to feed back to it, <coughs> so there's a formal, it's formal, because students are gonna trash each other or not give any feedback. Well, they usually don't trash each other inside a group. Okay. No, can um, groups give other groups feedback? They can, they can, so but they don't, they could. Is that the, that's an opportunity for my group to dish that group because they copied our stuff. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to start a, a war, but um, yeah. they're supposed to read everybody's, the finished blogs as preparation for the exam. Mm -hmm. And then I go through all the blogs and I pull out, you know, group 17 said, you know, this about this text. And since everybody should have read it, and the text and the blog to help them study for the test. I'm trying to use them as a loop, as a loop. the blog have dates because you got it there. You can see who said oh, it. Oh, I, I actually know who did it. That's what. I, that's how I know. So you're, that's how I know it's it again, happening. That's do it again. You are, you copy. I see it. Do it again. I'm tracking the. Tracking the oh, well, I give them a zero on yeah. their score. Okay, you guys copied this because it's obvious word for word, cut and paste. So you know. So, but, but I'm trying to get ahead of this and present it. That's, yeah. that's my question. Yeah. And so I appreciate the openness and all of that, but it's also maybe just the sheer number of bodies that I have. I don't know how to do it you, this you, way. You could solve that problem like by what you were suggesting earlier, by having individual teams, everything's blind until after a certain date when everything is completed, and then you just open it up to everyone, um, which is also but, but the process doesn't stop after you open it up because that's now we have these interpretations of the text and not all the same. And what's interesting is that students will read the same, say, chapter, groups of five students, and they come up with different interpretations. In other words, you're incorrect. 
but but it, it also reflects on the subject position of the readers, how they see a text, which is another part of our learning. We're learning that um, there's no such thing as objectivity <laughs> in any of this. Is it like cool where they're, they're you know, especially if they're you know reading each other's stuff, they're boy, their brains going over this idea. Well, I'm These hoping that, that, of it. That, that, that that's what but the, the TA and I also go in, and if there are errors, we point those out in the final text so that the students reading them will notice, oh, well, this isn't exactly true. You know, it's, it's kind of, that's where so-and-so did not say that, so, you know, if they're quoting it. Not like a great process for that. Well, I'm trying, but it's, 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 not, it's not, it's working for some, but not for all. So I was. Well, I'm thinking the time is spent, like, following. A ton. No, I lecture for two hours a week, and then this is one one class time that we spend on they that that is devoted to doing this. And do you have to follow up on that? Yes. How many roles will be five hours? Well, I meet with nine groups twice a week for in the preliminary while they're going through, so that so that in the um, what did you call it? You had a place where you could comment. I think it's on the right hand side. I can't see from here, but it looks like point. so so that um, in the blog it's a little different. Comments are underneath. So that I go in and comment and say, You guys are doing great, but I think the main theme, try going back and, and rounding out your you know, you, you you need a stronger main theme so that everybody else can sort of hang their body pieces and the conclusion to it. And and then they do if they if they read my comments and they go back and they do that, um, and then another time I go in and see how they're going and do you have any questions and sometimes they'll need questions for me professor what should we do blah 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 and then I give kind of different answers and then at the end they publish then that's what I grade I don't grade the one that they're working on I grade the finished one based on whether or not they um, were collaborating with each other and were. Do, and it's, it's based less on the, any truth value, although they can't totally listen to the text I have to give. What is their presence? Their presence and their efforts, and um, yeah. Yes. Right. Does this have more tools? Yes, this looks better yeah. than the blogging. The blog, the, I, had, I had trouble with some groups saying they didn't like the blogs, they didn't get it, whatever that means, because there's nothing to get. So they would do their work off, and and I said, no, you can't. That's zero because I can't see what you're doing. And the collaborate, the collaborating piece is a center. Yeah, no. So see that, but but because like you, I didn't know what they were going to do. You have to, yeah. you have to learn from your mistakes. And so there were new rules, you know, going out. And okay, this is the way it has to be. I feel like a dictator sometimes, even though this is supposed to be all very, you know, open and. Um, it's like herding cats, you know, they're all going off in different directions. Well, can you stack the rules on top of that? Yeah, I don't, I, 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 I guess so. Assign HTML, assign HTML quotes, 